The purpose of a wing on an airplane is to generate lift. As the plane moves forward through the air, a force is generated under the wing pushing it up, and that lift is obviously what holds the plane up. And I'm going to explain how a wing works, how the shape of the wing and its movement through the air allows it to generate lift. This is a picture of an A6 intruder. This was a Vietnam era combat aircraft. And the thing that you can see very well in this picture is the, the curvature of the wing. The plane's moving to the right, obviously, so you can imagine the wind hitting the wing from the right. So the wind is moving in this direction relative to the wing. And the thing to notice is the curvature of the wing, particularly across the top. The wing is not flat. It has, in this case, a very noticeable curvature on the top. And that curvature, when the air flows across the wing, that curvature allows it to generate lift. And here's how. Let's draw a simple wing in the notes here. So draw this on your page. Draw a line, something like this, and then have it curved across the top. And a wing's usually um, more rounded in front. In this case, the wing is going to move through the air to the right. So the air is going to be moving past the wing in this direction. We'll draw some air coming like this, going over the wing. And there's this curvature, especially along the top edge of the wing here. And it's the, the shape, it's tapered here in back because the tapered shape reduces drag and reduces turbulence. But imagine air, the plane's moving through the air, and so air has to get pushed out of the way so this is the air flowing past the wing now imagine some air right up here in this region okay some of that air ends up going under the wing and some of that air ends up going across the top and these lines that we draw that I'm drawing in the light blue here these are called streamlines and they are basically the flow of air relative to the wing and you can see that the streamlines get bunched up on the top of the wing, and that's because of the curvature of the wing. This air on top of the wing gets pushed up more than the air down on the bottom because the wing is relatively flat on the bottom. When the air gets pushed up, the air up above it can't move out of the way instantly. So these streamlines get squeezed closer together. The air is essentially constricted across the top of the wing. The flow is narrowed. This channel through which these streamlines are flowing, the flow of air is constricted into a smaller space on the top side of the wing. It's constricted between the upper curved part of the wing and the air up above it. So you can think of the air in front having a certain amount of space to flow through and then when it's on top of the wing it has a smaller amount of space to flow. This constriction of the air causes it to flow faster. It's sort of like a river. If you imagine a river from a top view and say, say here's the river and let's, we'll imagine it flowing to the left. So this is the, the banks of the river. And if you imagine a certain amount of water in here flowing and it's flowing to the left, well here where the river is very wide it's going to move more slowly. If there's a constant number of gallons per minute moving through the river, when it gets here in the narrow section, it has to pick up speed for there to be the same number of gallons per minute. Otherwise, it would be spilling over the side. And this happens naturally. The flow rate moves, the flow is more, more rapid in the narrower sections. And something similar goes on there on top of the wing. And the thing to note is that, and we'll, I'll write this in the notes here, the airflow is faster on the top. The airflow is faster across the top, so there is less pressure on top. Less pressure. And this is the important principle here. A fluid moving more quickly exerts less pressure. Now, the fundamental reasons for that are really pretty complicated, and that would be not even for a high school level class, but for a college level class. But you can, you can study this and you can verify this. And we'll, we'll verify this actually in just a little bit. You can prove this to yourself very easily. A fluid moving more quickly, whether that's air, like a, com a compressible fluid like air, or a non-compressible fluid like water. If it's moving more quickly, it exerts less pressure. 
so there's less pressure across the top of the wing than there is on the bottom and this difference in pressure creates a net force upward so I'll write this down here greater pressure I'll just say P for pressure greater pressure on the bottom greater pressure on the bottom so there's a net force up and that net upward force is the lift so that's basically what's going on with an airplane wing as the air flows past the wing it's constricted the airflow is more constricted across the top so it moves faster faster moving air exerts less pressure less pressure on the top means relatively speaking greater pressure on the bottom so there's a net force upward and you don't have to have a huge difference in pressure just a small drop in pressure on the top will result in a large force on the bottom if the area is large because the force is going to depend on the pressure and on the area across which the pressure is applied so a big wing can generate a lot of lift even if there's just a relatively small change in pressure here's a picture of a 747 this is a very large passenger aircraft and one of the things you can see here is the wings and the curvature of the wings and you see in back here you see these flaps that are pushing down those actually add even more curvature to the wing and allow it to generate more lift and those are especially used on takeoff and landing when they need more lift because the plane's not moving as fast when it's just starting to take off or when it's landing they generate a lot more drag though so they put the flaps up instead of down when they're in flight when they're cruising they get up enough speed that they're generating plenty of lift just from the regular wings without the flaps down and the other thing I want you to take note of in this picture is that the wings are large you need large wings to generate a lot of lift the 747 will fly several hundred miles per hour which sounds really fast but it's not nearly as fast as a fighter jet a fighter jet will go a few times that fast and because a fighter jet moves so much more quickly it can generate more lift with less with um with less wing wing area so here's a picture of an F-16 fighter plane and you'll notice that compared to the size of the plane the wings are much much smaller this plane will fly two or three times the speed of sound and in doing so you don't need a, a, as large a wing to generate enough lift because the additional speed causes more lift to be generated